Brought to you by wikivd.com Lost Profits Lost Profits were a Welsh rock band from Pontypridd, Wales formed in 1997. Founded by lead vocalist and lyricist Ian Watkins, bassist Mike Lewis, drummer Mike Chiplin, and guitarist Lee Gaze, they were originally a side project to hardcore punk band Public Disturbance. They were also part of the Cardiff music scene. Lost Profits released five studio albums, with their final release, Weapons, released on 2 April 2012. The band achieved two top ten hits on the UK singles chart. One number one single on the US Alternative Songs chart, several Kerrang! awards and nominations, and sold 3.5 million albums worldwide. In December 2012 Watkins was charged with multiple sexual offences against children. The band cancelled all tour dates, and the other members announced the disbanding of Lost Profits in October 2013 before the end of Watkins' trial. Watkins pleaded guilty to several charges in November 2013, and in December 2013 was sentenced to 29 years imprisonment plus six years on license. In June 2014 the remaining members formed No Devotion, with American singer Jeff Rickley of the band Thursday as the lead vocalist. Early Years 1997-2000 The band formed in 1997 in Pontypridd, Wales. Lost Profits formed, with two members of Public Disturbance which featured singer Ian Watkins on drums and guitarist Michael Lewis. Neither member initially left Public Disturbance, although Watkins left as soon as 1998. With Watkins on vocal duties and Lewis playing bass, the band also included guitarist Lee Gaze and Mike Chiplin on drums. Lost Profits started out as a part of the fledgling South Wales scene playing gigs at venues across Wales including TJ's in Newport. From there they went on to tours on the UK circuit. The band recorded three demos during this time. Here comes the party. Paratodas las putas celuses which translates as for all the jealous whores. And the fake sound of progress. These were produced by Stuart Richardson, who joined the band as bassist for the latter recording. Mike Lewis at this point switched to rhythm guitar. The fake sound of progress also included the addition of DJ Stepak, who would remain with the band for around a year. The first three tracks from their third demo were refined and re-recorded. For the release of their debut album of the same name of the title track MOAC Supreme and Stop quote. The latter two were renamed A Thousand Apologies and Awkward respectively. All of the EPs are out of print and are very rare. The band caught the attention of the two music publishers Kerrang! and Metal Hammer magazines both giving them glancing reviews. In 1999 they signed in with independent label Visible Noise. The Fake Sound of Progress 2002 the band's debut album The Fake Sound of Progress was released through Visible Noise in November. Recorded in less than two weeks for £4,000 the record drew on a wide range of influences. It would be re-released the following year through Columbia Records. Shortly after the completion of the album DJ Stepak decided he would not commit to the band and was replaced with musician Jamie Oliver who was originally the band's photographer but was told by the band's management that someone who wasn't part of the band or crew members couldn't join them on tour so Oliver bought a set of turntables and quickly became the band's DJ. The fake sound of progress featured many references to 1980s pop culture. In addition to the Duran Duran reference in the band's name, there was an image of Venger from the Dungeons, as well as song titles like Shinobi vs. Dragon Ninja and Cobra Kai. The first song's title was a reference to the video games Shinobi and Bad Dudes vs. 
Dragon Ninja, while the second was an alternative spelling of Cobra Kai, the name of the karate dojo in the Karate Kid movies. Another reference is the use of the VF-1 Valkyrie in Batroid mode. From the 1982 anime The Super Dimension Fortress Macross as part of the album illustration, the band worked with renowned producer Michael Barbiero to remaster the album and this new remastered version of the album was released in November 2001. The album appears to have divided the band's existing fan base, where the first accusations of selling out were leveled at the band, from the underground music scene within which they achieved their first success. During this period Lost Profits built up a strong live following with support slots, to popular acts such as Pitch Shifter, Linkin Park and Deftones, as well as several headlining stints of their own. They also took part in the successful New Titans tour, with Defenestration among other new UK metal acts of the time. Co-headlining the 2002 Deconstruction tour in London, supporting acts included Mighty Mighty Boston's in the Mad Caddies, Lost Profits featured on a bill consisting of more traditionally punk-oriented acts. This provoked hostility from certain members of the audience who were upset at Lost Profits' inclusion on such a bill. The band subsequently toured with Ozfest played at Glastonbury in the Reading and Leeds Festival. They also appeared on a number of British TV shows including Top of the Pops CD, UK and never mind the Buzzcocks. They also performed as part of the 2002 NME Carling Awards Tour. Start Something, 2003-04 After the extensive touring cycle for the fake Sound of Progress finally ended, the band took a brief break before beginning the process of writing new material. For Start Something at Frontline Studios in Carefully, Wales. They then entered Los Angeles Bigfoot Studio for a recording process that lasted from March until September 2003 with producer Eric Valentine. Valentine had previously produced albums for Queens of the Stone Age and Good Charlotte. The first single released from the album was the song Burn Burn the music video, for which began receiving heavy rotation on satellite and cable channels like MTV2 Kerrang! TV and SCUS in the UK. The song attracted some criticism however, as the opening bore a striking resemblance to Mother Mary a song from the band Fars Water and Solutions album. The band themselves even conceded in interviews that the singing pattern bore an undeniable Similarity to the Adamski song Killer, Burn Burn was released on 3 November 2003, and was originally scheduled to be closely followed by the release of the album. The release of the album was delayed several times and a headlining tour of the UK was also postponed during this time. The band rescheduled the cancelled UK shows with the exception of their scheduled appearance at the Reading and Leeds festivals, stating in magazine interviews that honouring those commitments would have meant leaving the recording studio while the album was only half completed. The album was released in the UK on 2 February 2004 and was commercially successful, achieving number 4 in the UK albums chart and selling over 415,000 copies. The album has sold over 687,000 copies in the US alone according to Nielsen SoundScan although in a 2012 interview with Gigwise Lee Gaze stated it had sold 890,000 copies in the US. Worldwide the album has sold 2.5 million copies according to BBC Wales. The critical response from mainstream magazines was mostly positive though the response from rock publications such as Kerrang! Metal Hammer and Rock Sound was sometimes tepid. To promote the album they toured North America Europe and as part of the Big Day Out Festival in Australia and New Zealand. The tour 
For this record culminated on 21 November 2004 at a sold-out show in Cardiff International Arena. Liberation Transmission, 2005-07 On 19 June 2005, founding member Mike Chiplin left the group to pursue other musical opportunities. Since then Chiplin joined another band called The Unsung and played with Accident Music until their split in 2011, which also featured Chris Morgan of Midasuno and former Funeral, for a friend guitarist Darren Smith. He has also opened up his own practice studio for young people to start bands. The remaining members began working on material for the next album. Due to the lengthy gap between the fake sound of progress and Start Something, and the backlash that grew against the band because of it. The remaining band members stated in various interviews that they wanted to release their third album in early 2006. As with Start Something the band wrote and recorded demo tracks for the album in a UK recording studio before completing the album in America. Liberation Transmission was recorded in Hawaii and saw the band work with Bob Rock. Drummer Josh Freeze recorded 10 out of the 12 drum tracks for this album. The band returned to their roots playing a series of small venues across South Wales. They also headlined Give It A Name a two-day event with My Chemical Romance. These shows featured the first live appearance of then 17-year-old Ilan Rubin on drums and the live premiere of songs Rooftop Say Town called Hypocrisy and The New Transmission. The album itself was released on 26 June 2006 and became the first Lost Profits album to reach number one on the UK Albums Chart. The album saw the band adopt a more contemporary sound, with far less emphasis on screaming than previous releases. Lost Profits began a full-fledged UK tour on 3 July 2006, as with their warm-up gigs prior. To the album's release the band selected South Wales-based support bands for this tour. The band followed this with another UK tour in November. They followed their UK dates with a European tour in France, Germany and several other countries. The main support for this was the Blackout. They returned to the UK for an arena tour in April 2007 from 18 April to 22nd. The scheduled venues were Glasgow, Manchester, Birmingham. Lost Profits also played at the Full Ponty Festival in Wales on 26 May 2007. The support acts included Paramore and The Blackout. The album has sold over 625,000 copies worldwide. The Betrayed 2007-10 Writing and recording the band's fourth studio album began in early 2007. Originally the band stated that they wanted the album released in 2007, however due to both touring and being unhappy with the results of their work in the studio, the band did not keep to their original release plan. Despite recording an entire album's worth of material with producer John Feldman, this work was shelved in favor of material they later recorded and produced themselves, with recording sessions for what would later be known as The Betrayed beginning in November 2008. Consequently, the album was not released until 13 January 2010, where it reached a peak of three on the UK Albums Chart. Throughout the earlier part of 2008, the band performed several dates including Download Festival which they headlined on the Sunday Night V Festival and Rock and Ring and Rock in Park as well as a small amount of performances around the UK. They also headlined the NME Radio 1 tent at 2009's Reading and Leeds Festival. The band claimed that The Betrayed is by far the finest, darkest and most real album of their career. Originally Ian Watkins stated he wanted the new album to be nastier and darker than previous efforts with more energy and vibe than before. 
In a blog post, guitarist Mike Lewis suggested that Ilan Rubin was very much a large part of the writing, recording, process. Following Rubin's departure, Luke Johnson of Beat Union was officially announced as the band's new drummer in August 2009. During this time Kerrang! published a world-exclusive article on lost profits, revealing the album's title and its release date of January 2010. In a later interview with Kerrang! in early 2009 Watkins stated that the record was the most honest album the band has ever done and that overall the record was a lot grittier and sleazier, while also stating that did not mean it won't be catchy but that it would not be done in such a twee way. When speaking about what the record would sound like, Jamie Oliver stated that he felt it had the bite that Start Something had, with the song ability of liberation transmission but personality of the fake sound of progress. The first single from the new album It's Not the End of the World But I Can See It From Here was aired for the first time on BBC Radio 1 on 19 August. It was subsequently released on 12 October 2009 and reached number 16 on the official UK chart. This was followed by Where We Belong which was released on 4 January 2010. The band commenced their UK tour with support from Kids in Glass Houses' Hexes We Are the Ocean and Sharks in February 2010. The Doncaster date to the UK tour was cancelled and refunded, but no reason was given for the cancellation. The Port Talbot date of the tour was postponed and moved to a different venue due to a fire at the Afan Lido Leisure Centre. The show took place on 1 May at the Cardiff International Arena. Lost Profits confirmed that they would tour Australia. The tour took place on 27 March 2010 at the Roundhouse NSW Sydney. The band also played at the 2010 Reading and Leeds Festival. Weapons 2011-12 in early 2011, the band rented a house in Norfolk that served as their studio while composing a demo and pre-producing for a new album. The band was also featured on British rapper, producer Labyrinth's album in late 2011. In August 2011 the band went on a short UK tour with dates in Cardiff, Bournemouth, Oxford and Norwich as well as the 2V festival dates and an additional appearance at the CJ Festival in Budapest, Hungary. During this short tour, the band debuted live a new song from the upcoming album tentatively titled Bring Ye M Down. The band's fifth studio album Weapons was released through Epic Records on 2 April 2012, leaving the long-time served record visible noise. Supported by a subsequent tour in the UK, Weapons was produced by Ken Andrews at NRG Recording Studios in Hollywood, California. The band released a teaser track in anticipation of their new album entitled Better Off Dead. In January 2012 though it was confirmed the song is not an official single. The band played at Australia's Soundwave Festival in February 2012 before heading back to the UK for an extensive tour in support of the new album in April and May supported by Mode Step. The band's first official single of the album, entitled Bring Ye M Down, was released on 6 February 2012 after debuting on Zane Lowe's BBC Radio 1 show. Lost Profits played select shows in Vans Warp Tour 2012. They played from 12 July through 5 August. On 9 April Lost Profits announced that they had signed to Fearless Records and would release weapons in the United States on 19 June 2012. Lost Profits played in the Cardiff Motorpoint Arena on 28 April to promote their new album Weapons, and played their second studio album Start Something in its entirety. The band toured the UK extensively again in November 2012 to coincide with a headline performance at the Vans Warp Tour 2012 UK. Three videos were released from Weapons. On 3 December 2012, 
Watkins tweeted en route to the Big Smoke to shoot our new musical video. When the band had previously debuted Bring Ye M Down on Zane Lowe's show in February, Watkins stated that the fourth single was to be a power ballad. However, a finished video was never released. Watkins' arrest and band's breakup, 2012-13 on 19 December 2012 Ian Watkins was charged with 13 sexual offences against children, including the attempted rape of a one-year-old girl. Watkins originally denied the charges. In response the other members of the group posted a message on their official website, stating that they were in a state of shock and were learning about the details of the investigation along with you concluding that it is a difficult time for us and our families and we want to thank our fans for their support as we seek answers. Consequently, they cancelled all future tour dates in wake of Watkins' arrest. On 1 October 2013, Lost Profits announced that after nearly a year of coming to terms with our heartache they would no longer make a perform music as Lost Profits. The post was signed, by all members of the band except Watkins. Later on 30 November, these members of Lost Profits released a lengthy statement in response to Watkins pleading guilty to attempted rape and sexual assault of a child under 13 stating that they were heartbroken angry and disgusted. They clarified that they had been unaware of the crimes Watkins was committing and while highlighting that he was a difficult character and that during the final years of the band working with him had become a constant miserable challenge. They still never imagined him capable of behavior of the type he has now admitted. They also urged any other victims to contact the authorities. In recent interviews, Watkins' former bandmates have claimed to have since disowned him following his conviction which ultimately resulted in the band's eventual breakup. On 18 December 2013, Watkins was sentenced to 29 years in prison plus six years on extended license, with a possibility of parole after serving two-thirds of his sentence. New Project Without Watkins, 2014-present on 25 April 2014 it was confirmed by ex-Thursday frontman Jeff Rickley that he would be working with the remaining band members on their new project. From a record label perspective through his own label Collect Records as a producer and also joining them as a vocalist, Rickley regarded their new material as having influences from Joy Division, New Order and The Cure. It was announced the new band would be called No Devotion and they released their first and second single Stay in Eyeshadow on 1 July 2014. In December 2015, media reported that Lost Profits had released a new single I Knew You Were Trouble, which was delivered to the streaming website Spotify. But the recording was actually the original version by American singer-songwriter Taylor Swift. The song was removed from the site after three days. Styles and Influences Lost Profits were most commonly termed new metal and emo. However, a wide variety of genres have been noted in their music with other genre tags applied to the band including hard rock, alternative rock, post-grunge and alternative metal. Their music is termed an aggressive style of rock blending strong driving guitars, groove and bounce and pop elements and accessibility. The punk side to the band's music has been noted, again specifically of the pop variety. The influence of heavy metal on their music is also noted, although this varies from song to song. Some have also described an emo side to the music. Their music has been praised as powerful combining softer melodies with an aggressive edge, with screamed vocals and catchy riffs while some have also stated it has a derivative formulaic or forgettable nature. They have been compared to bands such as Linkin Park, Limp Bizkit, Huber Stank, 
and Incubus. Watkins' lyrics range from somber to aggressive, and have been described as often conveying a feeling of disillusionment, with topics such as relationships or social groups, albeit frequently delivered in a rousing manner even when this is the case. Brought to you by Wikivd.com Would you like to know more?